Hello, welcome to Reality TV Breakdown. My name is Jenny, and today we are talking Seeking Sister Wife, Season 5, Episode 4, Seeking the Truth. Let's do it. So this episode picks up where the last one left off, and that is with Nick and his three wives. We know that Danielle was just back. I was unsure about that. It sounded like she was just coming to visit, but they thought she moved in. I didn't know. They clarified that on this episode. Nick said Danielle moved back a couple days ago. So she did move back in pretty quickly after getting an apartment. (laughs) I hope it was just an Airbnb and not really an apartment. But at any rate, She was back and had been back for a day or two before they're recording this as they're sitting outside. Now, we know at the end of last episode, Nick said, let's talk about bringing in another sister wife. How does everyone feel about that? And Danielle said, I don't feel good about it. And she ran off and went to the bathroom. That was the end of the episode. So she is now back. Nick is talking her off the ledge, telling her everything's going to be okay, giving her hugs. She comes back out onto the patio. April and Jen talk to her a little bit. April is very sympathetic, empathetic, sweet, understanding. She's crying as she's saying how much she loves Danielle and how sad she'd be if she wasn't there. And Jen just can't get there. I've always thought this. I haven't said anything about Jen before, but it seemed like she was almost kind of bitchy when it came to her reaction to Danielle not being there, or maybe she's just not cut out for this. And she's she's very stoic in her presence and not very warm. And so I didn't say anything because I just thought, well, yeah, let's just be me. It just, be. but then it just—I have to say something because it just kept coming to my mind again watching this episode where she just looks, and and then I feel like she's trying to act empathetic <laughs> and nodding and all that, but not a tear to be seen. It she doesn't need to have a tear over it, quite frankly. But we see lots of tears from April and lots of tears from Danielle. And nothing, nothing from Jen. I just find it kind of odd. She almost seemed in the past too, like she was kind of poking fun at Danielle for not being cut out for this and and poking fun in terms of saying, well, we might get another sister wife soon, knowing that Danielle wasn't ready for it. You know, like, I don't know. I'm starting to think Jen might be a mean girl. I'm on the fence. I'm not calling it yet. But I got my feelers out. Maybe that's why April was crying so much, because she thought, I have another person here with emotions. Don't leave me. (laughs) Don't leave me with the ice queen, please. Danielle acknowledged that her few days that she was away from them were downright horrible for her. She didn't enjoy them. She missed the family a whole bunch. And she's still confused. She's still messed up about it because she loves the family so much. She knows the family wants another sister wife. She's known that since before she joined the family, there were going to be more. And yet, she's just not ready for it yet. And they are. So it's awkward. Nick had a really reassuring thing, though, at the very end. He said to her, listen, We're going to be very picky about who this is. We're not just randomly going to go get another person to join the family. It has to be the perfect fit. It has to be somebody that everybody likes. So you will like her too for her to fit into the family. He's like, just like when we got you, we didn't, you know, we waited for the perfect person to join our family. So that was actually kind of nice of him. As much as I'm, I'm not a fan of Nick, those were really good words of wisdom for her, given this odd situation. (laughs) Well, that's putting it mildly. I don't think I'll ever completely understand polygamy in terms of thinking it's something that anybody would want to choose besides the man. But let's go on. Oh, before we do go on, I do want to say I do have a comment here that um, says that Danielle was sharing with, I think this wasn't a talking head. She was sharing that this experience in this Davis family David family, Davis family, is the most love she's ever experienced in her life. And so because of that, she doesn't want to leave, which kind of broke my heart. That the most 
love she's ever felt was to be one third of the love that a man can give you, you know, and and now it's going to go down even less. And maybe that's why, maybe because the other women feel more secure and they felt love in their lives. And so to them, the whole experience and the foundation of it all and the structure of it all works for them whereas they don't need the love from everybody else and they don't need a whole lot of attention from Nick and Danielle might I don't know a little pop psychology pop psych channel do a better job analyzing it than me we cut to the Sherwood family this is Ashley and Shane now we saw in the last episode that Ashley was deciding, am I going to continue things with this Grace girl or not? And she decided not to, which was smart because Shane didn't like the girl whatsoever. And no one else in America did either. <laughs> so right away, I mean, I don't know how much time there was between these, but somehow Ashley has jumped back on the bandwagon and she's going on another date with another girl that she found. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Well, she met this girl in a park. The girl's name is Sarah. She has an eight-year-old son, but she's very open to lots of things, and she's dated couples before in the past. I didn't know it was a thing, but apparently it is. Now, Sarah found it odd that she was just meeting Ashley and just dating Ashley on this first date because it has always been the couples that she's done things with, not just the female so that all be an interesting dynamic. And it will also be interesting to see if Sarah is at all interested in Ashley's husband, Shane, and what Shane thinks of Sarah. Oh, this could get really good. This, this has the potential of being very juicy. In the talking head, Sarah said that she feels that Ashley's very nice and, and she feels a connection, but she said that the pregnancy thing is kind of weird. And then that's all she said about it. And I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> you think? If this, if this was a man dating her, it would be kind of weird to be dating a pregnant woman who has a husband. Uh, I mean, it would be weird if she was having an affair with a man. Let's put it that way, because I just can't think of scenarios that this would be logical. But certainly, it is going to be odd how many women date other women or how many men date how many people in the world date somebody who's pregnant it is kind of odd i will say that understatement so they seem to be hitting it off pretty well they seem to have easy conversation ashley makes reference to that she said that it, the conversation flowed and was so easy as opposed to grace where it wasn't as much she also was thrilled that right away sarah's interested in meeting shane because she's always dated couples and not a single person. So obviously she's very open to meeting Shane because she's like, why is he not here? As opposed to Ashley, who went on five or six dates and then eventually begrudgingly agreed to meet Ashley's husband, Shane. That was a disaster from day one, that relationship with Grace. This one, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of into it. I can't believe I'm saying that. This is so weird. <laughs> I think I'm warping my morals and values by watching this show, but okay. In the world that it is, I think that Sarah might be a good match for Ashley. Okay, there we go. So at the end of the date, Ashley asks her if it's okay if she gives her a kiss goodbye. And I felt like she said yes. I felt like she was a little hesitant. And let's just face it, it's a little early. Anybody on a first date, we should not be having first date kisses. I mean, unless there's this magnetism of attraction between the two of you. But, I mean, you're just getting to know people. How can you know if you're into them when you've talked to them for 30 minutes in a park? I just, it, it felt too soon for any relationship, girl or guy, guy or guy, girl and girl, whatever else there is out there. First date, no kiss. Mm -mm. What is OK Boomer? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Later on, we see that Ashley went back and she's talking to Shane. Well, spoiler alert, she did share that she gave her a kiss and Shane was surprised. He was really surprised. And then he was even more surprised that Ashley's the one that initiated it too. So, I mean, he didn't seem upset. 
but he seemed surprised. I'm surprised. I'm not upset. I'm surprised. And I think it's wrong. <laughs> Mama Jenny says, do not kiss on a first date. But you're old. Let's cut to the Ryans. Okay. We are learning more about the Ryans on this episode. This was the family that was just introduced last episode. This is Justin and Becky. Now again, they live in Texas. Justin's a construction worker. Becky's father was a minister of a church that believed in polygamy. I heard from a, a viewer or somebody who commented on previous videos that Becky's father was an evangelical minister who was kind of radical and cult-like and and polygamy was part of the tenant of their cult I guess I don't know I don't know anything about it I feel like cult is such a negative word that I hate to stick it on when I don't have enough detail of, details about it but I could see it <laughs> oh that walks like a duck talks like a duck okay let's move on so the Ryans admit it has been 20 years that they have been seeking a sister wife. So it isn't like she came from there, they got married young and decided, because mm, we do know they have two kids already grown and flown. They're out of the nest. They only have four kids still at home. Yeah, it's been 20 years and they had that one relationship that's lasted a couple years, but the girl keeps getting cold feet. So in this episode, it must be Saturday afternoon. I thought they said, what are you doing Saturday night? But they must have changed it to the afternoon because this is the afternoon and they're meeting in like a, a smoothie shop or something like that. Some, I mean, maybe they serve food there too. But they each got like a smoothie and sat down and they were waiting for Desiree, the chick they met at the bar the last episode, to arrive. Justin is beside himself in terms of nerves. He just, he doesn't even know what to do with himself. And Becky's all excited. <laughs> Can't wait for her to come. And he's like, I don't know. I'm real, I'm hesitant. I'm already thinking she's not going to show up. And she's like, oh, I think she will. And she looked at her watch. It literally was one minute past. And she's like, we got to give her some. He's like, should we text her? She's like, it's only been a minute. Give her some time to get here. Well, a text comes through on Justin's phone. The text is from Desiree, and she said, I'm getting cold feet. I'm so sorry. You're lovely people. I hope you find what you want, but I just don't think that I am ready for this, and I hope you find somebody who is open to it and, and ready for it. So she didn't show up. I mean, I thought it was weird, and she was just being nice, but indeed, that's what happened. She was just being nice in the bar trying to not hurt their feelings. In this episode, Justin explains what he's looking for in a sister wife. Here's his criteria. Number one, a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. Number one, hello Garrick. <sighs> Honest to goodness, why is it in this polygamous culture that everybody is so incredibly superficial? Number two, that she's single. <laughs> That's not number one. Number one is she must be a beautiful woman over being single. We'll deal with it if they're married. <laughs> we'll work around it. But she must be beautiful or it's not going to be part of the deal. Number three, she just has to be open to this whole experience. Yeah. It doesn't have to be kind, compassionate, sweet, loving, forgiving, joyful, funny, gets along with the kids. Yeah, none of those are any of his criteria. None. Now let's add Justin to our list of guys we do not like on this show. I did catch in this episode, I don't know if you caught this, if you watched it, but Justin did a Freudian slip. He was talking about Stephanie, the other chick who's dated, I don't know, was it a bunch of months or was it a couple years? I, for a while. They've been dating this Stephanie gal who lives in another state, has come to visit. They go on little trips together. They get together. She's all into it. And then she gets cold feet and things. Oh, no, this is kind of weird. I don't know. I'm nervous about it. What will people think? And she backs out. Can't really blame her. And we hear Justin say that he thought Stephanie was the one for him. Mm. For he didn't slip, he didn't say for them or their family, or their relationship. You know, this is supposed to be a conglomeration of all working together. He's just trying to find another pretty chick to bang. Just like Garrick. Honestly, 
I mean, Nick, he's got a whole bunch of narcissistic things going on, but he's never come out and said superficial things at all, ever, about the women. He's made it seem more like, I just want to find a woman who gets along with the other ones and that it's a cohesive environment. So can I believe I'm putting Nick at the top of the (laughs) moral compass of this show? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. That's off the cuff. We have, we have to analyze that. I'm not saying it. But it just seems that way right now because here we have Justin becoming the pig the Garrick is as well and just putting everything on appearance and then slipping and saying, oh, I really thought Stephanie was the one for me. Doesn't even correct himself and say, I mean us. Mm. So in the end, they get stood up. And right before they go, Justin says, it's the same problems that we have with everyone. And Becky says, it's so confusing. (laughs) Not really. (laughs) Polygamy is, is kind of not really a thing. It's very outside the box. And the fact that somebody's willing to dabble in it and then kind of gets freaked out and thinks, I don't know if this is for me. Doesn't seem confusing to me at all. I would think that that's 99.9% of the people's reactions. So I don't know what Becky's confused about. Oh, let's cut to the couple that we love so much, Danielle and Garrick. Back down in Cancun, it's the next day. Danielle and her talking head still is saying that she is scared about the situation. And that next day, she got a text from Natalia asking her to meet with her one-on-one without Garrick. It's interesting how much more mature Natalia is than Garrick and Danielle because there should have been a lot of just one-on-one time anyway with her if she's going to be the sister wife. It's never happened and Danielle has never requested it. She should have. She should have. And one step better than that, Garrick should have said, I want to make sure you two are good. I want you to go do an excursion together or spend the afternoon together or whatever. But no, Garrick is trying to get as close to this chick as possible because he wants to bang her before the end of the trip. I'm a man on a mission, Nance. I'm a man with a plan. Before Danielle goes down to this meeting, she says she's very nervous about it because she's worried about Garrick. Does she think Garrick's going to be mad at her for meeting one-on-one? If so, this is such a big red flag, I can't even say. Unbelievable. I don't understand what he can be upset with her about. Danielle did not even want to go on this trip. She has been saying consistently, I'm not ready. Until Garrick says, but God is telling me this is the one. And we have to listen to God, right? Oh, the manipulation and using God to manipulate somebody is just a whole nother level of evil. It really is. Garrick has moved from creepy to evil in my eyes. And quite frankly, he moved to that evil level before this episode. (laughs) Just so you know where I stand because I use creepy a lot. He's beyond creepy. So Natalia can now tell that Danny is hesitant. That's why she's calling down this meeting. She knows that Danny's not 100% on board with Natalia coming in as a sister wife. She can she can sense it and she doesn't even speak the language. Body language alone has told her Garrick's wife is not on board. So she wants a private meet and greet with her. So okay, Danielle goes down. They start talking. She gets Danielle away from Garrick so she can find out Truly, what does Danielle want in this situation? In their conversation, Natalia, straightforward, asks the questions, no messing around. Danny never says, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not so sure about this whole thing. She says she's nervous about it because of the situation with Roberta and points out they were courting Roberta for three and a half years. I didn't even realize it was that much. Three and a half years they courted Roberta and it didn't work out. She flaked out in the end. I mean, maybe justifiably, but I'm just saying. In the end, it didn't work out. So now Danny's thinking, here we are. You are Roberta 2.0. I just feel like it's hard to be close to you because I feel like you're going to hurt us just like Roberta did. Danny, who is Danielle? She goes by Danny for short. And uh, Natalia refers to her as Danny. Danny adds that she's nervous about her boys 
as well. Well, thank you. This is the first time somebody has expressed concern about the boys in this situation. The rest of us viewers are very concerned about those boys. So yes, we're concerned about the boys. I'm glad she's concerned about the boys and I'm glad she said it. And then Danny says that she doesn't want to move forward with Natalia unless she knows that Natalia is ready to commit to their family for life. Natalia says she's in love with Garrick and she wants to move forward, but she's now hesitant because she can sense hesitation from Danielle. And Natalia says she's nervous about moving forward too because this is really going to be uprooting her life to go back to go to America, a country where she doesn't speak the language, and live permanently with Danielle and Garrick. It's a huge change and she doesn't want to do it, obviously, without Danny being on board 100%. Natalia comes right out and says that she's in love with Garrick. Is that okay with you? And instead of saying yes or no, we get a kind of answer and answer from Danny again. Danny says, we're all going to have struggles and sacrifices in this relationship. I would take that as a no. I'm not ready to have you on board, but. And then Garrick comes down. He couldn't stand it. Couldn't let them finish their conversation on their own. He just inserted himself. You can tell he was not happy that they were having their own conversation without him. Just as Danny predicted, he's not happy. Mm-mm. He is not happy about the two of them talking. And he says, what's going on? And Natalia says something to the effect of, well, Danny is afraid. And so we're talking about that. And Garrick said, you told her you're afraid. He didn't even say, you're afraid. He didn't say that to her. He knows. He said, you told her you're afraid. Mm -mm. He is trying to just control the puppet strings of both of them. And he is upset that they are communicating to each other. Clearly, he's told Danny, don't say anything. Don't let her know about any of your hesitations. It'll be fine. It'll work out. And he is not happy. Right away. You told her you're afraid? No, I didn't. The reaction from Danielle was, no, I didn't say that. Natalia said, yes, you did. And then she said, You yeah. told me that you are afraid yeah. and that you feel a little afraid because of everything that happened with Roberta. Yeah, I did say that. Well, stand up proud. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's okay to be afraid and to share it, but apparently not around Garrick. Oh, he's worse than we ever thought, people. He is worse. Who was it? Somebody wrote in one of my comments after watching Seeking Sister Wives. Sister, after watching Seeking Sister Wife, I always want to call it Sister Wives. Seeking Sister Wife, that next season, Sister Wives is going to be tame. <laughs> and I can't argue with that. I agree. So eventually, when Danny admits, she's like, well, yeah, I did say that. Garrick says, I don't understand. Liar! You understand completely, you just don't like it. What you don't understand, I'll tell you what you don't understand, and maybe this is what he was thinking, I don't understand why you're not sticking with the plan and just making it seem amazing and that you're really happy to have her here. Why are you not doing that? I don't understand. You're messing it up for me. I am ready to sleep with this girl and you are preventing me from doing it. That's what he really doesn't understand. How his wife could be so disrespectful and not loyal and not faithful and not obedient enough to suppress all of these feelings and just say, everything is fine and I'm very happy for Natalia to join us. Oh, but it gets better because Garrick says, I don't understand because you told me that you're 100% she's my wife. Do any of us believe that? Any of us for a second believe that she said she's 100% my wife? She would have never said that because she has consistently been saying, I don't know. I don't know if we're ready for this. I don't know if she's the one. I'm not feeling connected to her like I did with Roberta. I, You know, like everything is opposite of that. There is no way 
she said, I am 100% into this. And she just pauses and kind of looks at him and stops. Like, she wanted to say, I never said that. You, what do you, I don't understand, I guess. I mean, I guess I was in here for the whole conversation, so is that all you said? What do you mean? Well, because you told me that you're 100% know she's my wife and to be my wife. But she doesn't say it. She keeps her mouth shut and she keeps sweet. This is so frustrating. And in the talking head now, we have Danny breaking down and crying. Because this is a big mess that Garrick's got them into. And she doesn't know how to get out of it. Because I don't think she's permitted to speak up. Oh, it's so bad. And then she's referring back to Roberta in the talking head. And this I didn't really like a whole bunch. She said, when you trust someone with all your heart and they trample it, it's devastating. And I never had that before. Wake up, Danielle. You have that on the daily. Your husband is trampling your heart, your motives, your desires, your thoughts, everything. And controlling you like a cult leader would. Why was she so devastated about things not working out with Roberta? Because I think she knew Garrick was going to be so upset about all of it. And somehow, I think he was going to blame her. Just my opinion. I have no fact on that. But I think she was devastated because she thought, oh, shoot. And this girl, even though I hate the fact he's sleeping with her, I get along with her fine. Now we have to find somebody else and start all over again. And I hate this process. And I don't want a sister wife. Subtext in the back of her brain. I swear it is. I'm sure of it. In this episode, we have a classic example of poor communication amongst the Merrifields. We have Garrick afraid to ask questions for fear of what the answer might be. So he doesn't ask Danielle any direct questions. We have Danny afraid to upset Garrick. So she's not sharing everything that she's thinking. And now we have Natalia, who doesn't even speak English. <laughs> She's feeling sad. Sad? No. Yeah. Sad. No, no. Me feeling sad right now? Yeah. This, like, talk about poor communication. And yet, the best communicator in this triad is Natalia, who doesn't even speak their language. She says she's sad. And then he's like, sad? Sad? Like, what is this word sad? No, she's not sad. She's fine. And then he actually says that. But first, he shares in a talking head that five years ago, he had a vision. <laughs> red flag, red flag, right there. Okay, let's go on. He had a vision that he was going to have five wives. Mm, it's just called a dream. You had a dream. Or you just made the whole thing up, one or the other. I don't think he had a vision that he had five wives. If he had a vision and it was a vision from God, God would pave a way for that to happen. It's not happening for him. This is a lot of struggle. You shouldn't have to work so hard to fall in line with God's will is for your life. It doesn't work that way. This is where he becomes evil, how he twists and manipulates the Bible and God. So he says... He not only had five wives, but he said, and they were good. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what that means. I had, five years ago, I had a vision that I had five wives, and they were good. <laughs> right down below if you have any idea. What does that mean? They were good. They were all beautiful, because that's all he cares about is outward appearance, maybe. I don't know. And he doesn't have one additional wife now. That's because you have no vision. So I poo-poo your vision, Mr. Garrick. He needs to get on some good meds if he thought that vision was real. Let's move on. Oh, I wrote in here, drinking game. We should have been doing this all along. Every time Garrick says, propose, I want to propose, we're going to propose, can't wait to propose. We should have been drinking. We should have taken a drink every time. We can start it now because here's the next scene. Yeah, this isn't making me too happy, especially when I'm getting ready to propose here soon, and um, yeah, I'm not knowing what to do at the moment. And Garrick says he doesn't know what to do 
you don't know what to do. Your wife is saying you're not, in, she's not into this. What, what's the problem here? What's the difficulty? How do you not know what to do? Any idiot can look at the situation and know what to do and say, mm, it's not right. If nothing else, it's just not time. It's too fast. I was going to say, this is your wife. It's not even a wife. She gave him a divorce. This is the mother of your children. The woman who stood by your side through all these crazy visions. And she's still here. Listen to her. Natalia goes on to give a great synopsis of what they need to do next. And Danny's nodding. She's in agreement. I think it may take more time to move forward with this relationship so that Donnie can feel more comfortable and free from all this fear. There's San John all? Yeah. Yeah. What did Garrick hear when she said that? No sex on this trip. No sex on this trip. No sex on this trip. And um, he disagrees with her mature stance that Danny agrees to. This is what he says. But I think it's normal for her to have to go through a time period I was telling her how God... With a new relationship. Because fear is never from God. Mm -hmm. And so you'll lose out on your blessing if you live in fear. Right? Mm -hmm. He's the worst. He's the worst. And we have Danny in tears again. And here we have Garrick in his cult leaderish voice telling both of them how it is. Don't worry about her. Disregard this behavior. She's going to work through it. And of course, he ends it with his usual, right, to Danny. And Danny says, mm-hmm, with her head down as sad as could be. This is almost like watching. Every now and then, it, it kind of crosses a line. And this was that one part, that one scene where I felt like it crossed the line into like, not being enjoyable to watch because I felt like I'm, I'm just witnessing a husband abusing his wife and beating her down with his words. But, oh, he's just evil. I wrote in my notes here, I'm really starting to like Natalia. Who would have thought Natalia, who doesn't speak English, is going to be the voice of reason? And yet she is. And she comes back with this gem. You told me that God spoke to you, but I don't think God would like to see Donnie unhappy. <laughs> mic drop right end of conversation thank you natalia so true so mature okay wait garrick's not gonna accept that he comes back again i don't think danielle's unhappy just certain moments danny is not unhappy She's the epitome of unhappy. We could be borderline depressed over here. She is not unhappy. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. You did not see that. Nobody was here. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. He can go about his business. You can go about your business. Move along. Move along. Move along. Danny is not unhappy. Hmm. Oh, I just, it's, it's laughable. That's all I can say. That, that line topped them all. This is where he just keeps pushing and refuses to listen to logic and reason. He's like, no, no, no. That's not going to get her in my bed before the end of this trip. No, 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 no. She's not unhappy, right? Right? Tell her you're not unhappy. Please, I'm begging you. And then Natalia, with more balls than anybody, tells Garrick to leave again. Oh, he had to have just been fuming. And I think his reaction without the cameras may have been a little bit different. He did go, but you can tell he's not happy. I just don't know what the heck's going on. He does not want to leave the two of them to talk to each other. He does not trust Danny to stay the course and say what she's supposed to say, not what she really feels. Garrick is seeing his boinking session disappear away. Don't go. Let's go back to Shane and Ashley. 
So they are talking, as I mentioned before. She comes home and she's talking to him about the date. He comments on how happy she looks and what a good mood she's in. And so he's happy about that. He recognizes that it's very different than when she was going out with Grace. And she's sharing all about the date and a few of the things I mentioned earlier. She said that she's happy that She has a child already, so she understands and would be open to her children. She understands pregnancy because she's gone through that. So Ashley's just loving this girl. Even though when he's talking with Ashley, he's very supportive and said, that sounds great and looks wonderful. You're having another date and asking all kinds of questions. And he tells her he's proud of her and everything. And the talking head, he comes across a little bit different. If Ashley did start to pull away from me and I I felt threatened in any way, I would tell her how I might be feeling alienated. You know, hopefully she'll be understanding, but there's there's always a risk. I mean, there's a risk of the unknown always. Cookies. I will tell her how I might be feeling alienated. Might. Hopefully she'll be understanding. Yeah, there's a risk. She'll fall in love with somebody else and leave you. I, I, I don't. I just don't think he's into this. I really don't. I think Shane is just the lapdog to Ashley. He's only agreeing to this because this is what she wants and he is so smitten by her that he will do whatever she says. He is very hesitant. So Natalia and all her brilliance is having this one-on-one conversation with Danielle. She said, I want to know, is this something that you really want or are you just doing it because it's what Garrick wants? And Danielle says, no, it's something I want. I believe that God keeps bringing it up in our lives and I'm the one that proposed it originally. I don't believe it. Mm. I just don't believe it. I believe that Garrick has told her she's the one that's proposed it originally. I believe that at some point it's come up in conversations or at their church since he's talked to his pastor about it and his pastor doesn't seem opposed to it. So they must be going to a church that supports polygamy. I think that situations in the church and with their church friends and with the pastor and that it's been brought up and Garrett keeps telling her, why does this keep coming up in our lives? Why does this keep getting proposed? What do you think this is about? And at some point she said, I don't know, maybe it's something we're supposed to do too. That's it. I don't think she came to him and said, you know what? I feel like this is a calling from God. Why don't we look into it? I don't think it went down that way. And now I think Garrick is like, oh, okay. And he's like, wow. And he's constantly reiterating. I love how you brought this up. I love how this is your idea. I think you're going to be so close with your sister wife. You're such a strong wife. I can see it now because he is a master manipulator. He boils my blood. I see that. Natalia reiterates what she said before. And that is, maybe it is a calling from God. Maybe, or you believe, it's a calling from God. But even if it is a calling from God, God doesn't want us to be sad. That is not a tenant of the Christian faith. That is not one of the fruits of the spirits. There's nine of them. Sadness is not one of them. She's so smart to say, all right, you you think you're getting called by God, but look how sad you are. Garrick said, Sad? What is this sad? No, no, sad. Everything's fine. Sad. You want to know what's sad? You're, you're sad. Danielle doubles down and says, no perfect time for a relationship. But again, I think God is telling us to do this. So we just have to walk in faith. That's not what God means when he says walk in faith in the Bible. He doesn't mean you go into a polygamous relationship, which is not a biblical thing, and then say, I know it's very painful and it's hard, but I'm walking in faith. No, no, no. (laughs) They need to go back to Sunday school and learn the basics. So Danielle tells all of this and says, we need to move forward. We need to walk in faith. We have to trust God. He spoke to Garrick. He spoke to me. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Natalia's kind of reading it along the way, and then she's like, yeah, and and Danielle's like, yeah. And then after she finished it, Danielle's like, (sighs) like, that was so hard for me to say because I'm not believing a word of it. I feel like there's never a perfect time to start another relationship, but I do feel we have to walk forward in faith. I feel like God brought you into our life and that you're supposed to be a wife and that God told that to Garrick and I, and we have to trust Yeah. Yeah.
but I'm trying to figure out how to reassure her because I know my husband is over there somewhere very mad at me right now because I told her I was scared earlier. And now I need to make this all better. Oh, what a mess the situation is. But how illuminating it is in terms of we can really see what Garrick has been saying to Danielle. So they finish the conversation. Danielle goes and tells Garrick, it's fine. She's going to be fine. I told her that, you know, we're going to be working through this. And I think it all turned out okay. And Garrick's still acting stupid. I don't understand what the problem is. <laughs> They're all sitting down and having dinner then. And I noticed that only one of the two boys is sitting down to dinner. So I don't know if one of the boys has already said, I- I'm done with this camera stuff. I'll take my plate in my bedroom. I don't know. But only the oldest boy is sitting there. None of the boys should be on camera, quite frankly. They should both be sitting on the couch in the living room area eating and out of the camera's view, in my opinion. Danielle says this. Opening up to Natalia and telling her how I'm feeling, it makes me scared that, you know, she is sensing my feelings and she's reading my emotions pretty darn well. And I'm nervous that it's going to hinder her response to Garrick, if he does propose to her, that maybe she'll feel like, you know, she doesn't want to move forward. This is so confusing. So she can read my emotions. She can read. She can tell. She knows me very well. She can read and tell. I'm very hesitant about all this. So now I'm nervous that when Garrick proposes, it might affect her answer. It should affect the answer. You're not ready for this yet, Danielle. Why is this such a difficult concept for the two of them? They are both frustrating me so much. So we cut back now to Nick going out to dinner with the third wife, Danielle, the other Danielle. And can I just say, like I said that he was as bad as, he wasn't as bad as Garrick. Garrick was worse. But there are so many things I didn't like about him. But like she walks in and he tells her how gorgeous and beautiful she is. He gives her a kiss. He calls her my love. I don't know. I just think men in the black culture, a lot of them are raised by mamas who do a better job <laughs> at getting these men to be affectionate with their women. Am I wrong? This is just a perception of mine. It was just touching for me to see. I just thought, oh, I like Nick now. (laughs) I've forgotten all the horrible stuff about him. (laughs) But I do appreciate that. We don't see that with Garrick. We don't see that with Cody, if we're going back to Sister Wives. We're not seeing that with Justin here. We haven't seen it with Shane. And we don't really know much about Are we going to ever see more about this other couple? Nyla and Naeem? I don't know. We don't know enough about them yet to see. But we haven't seen it so far in him. I just feel like that's an upside to Nick. He is very affectionate and loving with uh, physical touch as well as words of affirmation to his wife. So he knows what Danielle, he can see the needs that Danielle has and he's trying to fill them. It's a good thing. So as they're sitting down, they're hashing out the same stuff. I'm not going to go over all of it. It's the same things they've been talking about this whole time. And Danielle just basically wants them to hear her and her to be able to express her opinions and for them to listen. And he agrees. And at the end of the conversation, Nick says to Danielle, I would love it if you can sit down and have a conversation with just April because April was impacted the most with you leaving. April, lots of tears from April. And Nick says this family is very important to her and the kids are very important to her. So she took it the hardest. And Nick is concerned because Danielle has got this apartment. I guess it wasn't an Airbnb. It was an actual apartment that has a lease on it. And so he's like, she can pick up and leave anytime. So he wants to make sure that she understands what she's getting into and they're in a commitment together and that April feels comfortable with Danielle coming back too because she probably has the same fears. All right, we finish the episode going back to Cancun because there's so much meat in this meeting in Cancun. I just wonder, is the rest of the season going to be like boring? (laughs) Because it has been action-packed for these first few episodes. Crazy. Let's go back to Cancun where it's going to get even crazier than it's been. How is that possible? Okay. 
I just want to put this entire segment on this channel, but I can't because I'll have a copyright strike. So I don't know how I'm going to handle it. If I'm just going to keep chopping it up or just putting part of it, but I am just here for it. Okay. So Roberta, they're preparing dinner back at their casienda, wherever they're staying. Little apartment-y kind of place in Cancun. They're preparing dinner and Roberta is confronting Garrick and saying, hey, what's up? You told me you were no longer on dating sites and yet I see it here. You are. And he's kind of like, uh, no, not really. Like, uh, no. He's the, he's the worst liar. How can you ever trust somebody like that? But the best part is Danielle's reaction. She realizes what's going down and she's just like, You told me that you are no longer on a dating site, but I can see that you are still. See? New? I'm not continue to look. Yeah. Right? If this isn't confirmation that she doesn't want this to go any further, and that she just wants to stick it to Garrick, I mean, she does. She's living for it. Just as we're living for it, she's living for it in the moment, too. So Natalia, I don't know how she found out this information. Maybe she was just bored at night in her room with her mom. Or maybe her mom is bored on this trip and she's looking into Garrick. And they found out that he is on other dating sites still. Now, she, Natalia said that when they first started dating, Garrick promised her he was getting off all the dating sites. And she said, this isn't something I requested because I... I didn't even know he was on other dating sites because remember their whole story was it was an Instagram connection that she saw him and then he requested to follow her and that's kind of how it all went down which is very fuzzy and unclear and doesn't make sense but that's the little bits of the story that we received. She didn't know he was on dating app sites. Oh but now. She's looking and she found out he's on a dating app site. Do you think that maybe a producer kind of said, hey, what's going on here? <gasps> Don't say anything. Don't say that I said anything. Just pretend like you found it yourself. <laughs> <sighs> anything to stick it to Garrick, I am all for. She grabbed his phone to use the cell phone translator app and she saw the notification on his phone that he gotten a message from somebody on the dating app. So here's Garrick playing dumb. <laughs> oh no, I didn't know that was there. And Danielle's like, yeah, you had a profile on there. You still had a profile. You knew you had a profile on there. And he's like, yeah, but, yeah, but uh, they can't message me. Yeah. yeah, you still have your profile on there. Oh, gee. They can see no. your profile. You knew that. Yeah, yeah. You no, knew that. They can't message. You knew that they could see your profile. But they can't message. Yeah. Clearly, he knows they can message him. And Roberta's like, let me show you. <laughs> Man who does not know technology. <laughs> I just saw the message notification pop up. Let me show you where it is. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh, what? Boy, he plays dumb all the time. I don't know. What does that mean? Did you say that? I'm so confused. What's happening? What? I can get messages on my dating app? Mm. He's trying to figure out how to handle the fact he got caught. And he's like, I got these two women who are mad at me and I don't know what to do. I have an idea. I'll just ignore it all and keep cooking dinner and it will go away. Mm. This Natalia is not going to let things go away. Maybe Danny lets things slide and lets you get away with things, but Natalia's not. And Danny's stepping up and speaking up too. She might be finding her voice through Natalia after all. Not that I think Natalia needs to join the family, but maybe this just little rendezvous and them together for a few days is helping Danny get a backbone. So Danielle, for the first time ever, we see her speak up to Garrick. Garrick is saying, I'll just delete the app because I didn't know that we could message back and forth. And she said, yes, you did. You knew that 
you could message back and forth and people could keep liking your picture. And I tried to get you to delete it months ago and you wouldn't do it. He's like, oh, I don't think I ever said I wouldn't do it. Like, because he just deletes it. Like, oh, okay, I'm deleting the app. Everything's going away. Not like you can't just download the app five minutes later and log back in and everything is still there. And Danielle's like, oh, she's now getting miffed because she tried to get him months ago to delete the app and he wouldn't do it. And he... He said, I never said I wouldn't do it. And Danielle's like, "Uh uh-huh, yeah, you did. I asked you to do that months ago, and you wouldn't do it. What, did I say I wouldn't do it? Yeah. You were like, why? We're going to be searching for other wives. Twice. And now you're just like, oh, no problem, I'll delete it. (laughs) I didn't disagree with you. I said, if we delete the app. You said we're not going to delete it because we're still seeking additional sister wives. You needed to keep the app on your phone. No, I mean, it's no... What? And I understand you don't wear a bliss. I mean, I said that to him in Colorado, and he disagreed with me. But as soon as Natalia says it, it's like, no problem. It's like, what? Like... Hmm. I don't know why Garrick ever initially told Roberta I'm going to delete them all when she didn't even know they existed. And he knew that he wanted to keep him there to get additional sister wives. So I, he just like says lies for n- no reason even. Maybe because his whole life is constant lying in his marriage that he just can't help himself. He lies even when he doesn't need to. It just keeps getting better and better. Danielle and Garrick are now, Danielle is speaking up. Garrick is his usual self. Oh, I don't know what's happening here. And Danielle's like, I'm just so over this. I can't believe it. And he's like, oh, you don't know. I don't. If I delete the app, won't I lose all my data? Which I don't think he will. But he's like, won't I lose my data? And Danielle's like, yeah, well, you said that before. And I told you, no big deal. When we're ready to get another sister wife, we can just open it up and create a new profile. You don't need to keep it now. Oh, I don't remember saying that. Danny's getting heated and Roberta can't understand a word of what's going on. <laughs> she's standing there and she's watching this fight going down of Gag talking like this. And Danielle like. Mur, 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 mur. And she's like, translator, please. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's so comical. It's like a circus. Yeah, I wasn't even getting on there doing anything. Yes, I mean, you were. You were searching there all the time. That's a lie. No, I don't. That's a that's an absolute complete So you don't lie. look at who's liked you? No, I get messages and it tells me if somebody liked me, but I don't go on there. You didn't look at new people? No. That's a lie. She's beside herself. You don't look at women on the app. Is that what you're saying? And he's like, no, I don't. She's like, liar. I love it. Call him out. Oh, Danielle is starting to see the light. You didn't look at new people? No. That's a lie. (gasps) Poor Danielle. It is a huge lack of respect. It's like zero respect for you and all the respect in the world for her. Especially, again, I feel like I'm repeating myself. Natalia and I even asked him to do it. He's doing it for her on his own when his wife asked him to do it and he said no to her. It's it's not good. And I love how Danielle is opening up her eyes and seeing, oh, is this how it's going to be in our marriage? If we bring in another sister wife, you'll do whatever she says and ignore me? Hmm? Mm Mm-hmm. Garrick, meanwhile, is not saying anything besides, oh, I don't know. What's going on? I don't know. I... I don't know how apps work. What? Mm. He's basically ignoring as she's continuing to talk. Now that he's chopping bacon, <laughs> just chopping some meat on a cutting board. This is not a comfortable situation. I'm like ignoring it, trying to ignore it. Just make dinner. Like I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Roberta wants a translation. Danielle's putting it in the phone and giving it to her. He's still chopping his little meat there. There's a major conversation going on. Could be the end of like all of this. And as opposed to him communicating and trying to talk through it, he's like, I don't understand why I can't just ignore everybody and just they'll just go away. 
It's happening. It's two against one. Yeah, that's going to be your life, Garrett. Get used to it. And it ends there in the kitchen. Scene. Oh, riveting television. <laughs> kind of went disgusting and sad there for a little bit, but now <laughs> it's getting really good. And I'm like, no, don't make that the end of the episode. Don't make us wait another week. Come on. Dang it. We do see that next week we are finally going to get some more of Nyla and Naeem. So, yay, we haven't seen them since the first episode. And this is what, episode four or five? And oh, where are we? This is episode five. There's been four episodes without them. I swear they've only been in one episode. Maybe not. Maybe it was the very end of one episode. They introduced it and then they came back and they were still at that same meal. But there's been no other scenes besides that kitchen scene when his mom came over. So finally, we get some more of them. I'm very excited about it. And it appears that the sister wife that they are seeking, that they met online, that lives in another state, is going to be flying in. So that should be good. And of course, we are going to continue with the Danielle and Garrick situation. Oh, juicy good. I just love how Garrick's feet are held to the fire. This is putting me in a good mood for the rest of the day. I'm very excited. All right, if you haven't liked and subscribed yet, do it right now. I appreciate you. Thank you. Leave me a comment. I read them all. Bye.